Okay, we're uh, a couple minutes past two now, so we'll go ahead and get started. I think we'll have some folks join in a little bit later, but that's certainly okay. Uh, my name is Chris Sanders. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm the founder of Applied Network Defense. We are a training company. We're focused on training security practitioners how to be better at their jobs and how to catch more bad guys. Uh, and we're really focused on problems that matter and then making that education uh, accessible to people in a way that's very high quality while also still being uh, entirely affordable. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about some of our offerings a little bit later. Of course, if y'all are all here, it's probably because you've heard about our new hands on course. Uh, it's one I'm really excited about. Uh, I've been a longtime Bro user. Uh, Bro is very valuable for me in my uh, job and in previous jobs, building socks and doing network-based detection. Uh, but Bro is also a little bit of a bear. It's it's a lot. There's a lot to it. There's a lot involved with the scripting of the detection that goes. Uh, with that and recognizing that's one of the reasons I wanted to get this class together and I was really glad to find Aaron Eppert who uh, is one of the best bro experts and he's very skilled in the development of bro scripts sees things uh, through a very unique lens and he's kind of brought that to the course here uh, today and what we're going to do today is preview the course a little bit by actually just showing you something useful about bro that you can kind of take with you um, and maybe uh, teach you a little bit about something about it and if you like it maybe you'll be interested in the course and if not no worries that's great too uh, as long as you walk away with something useful today so uh, I'll introduce Aaron here he's the uh, director of engineering for uh, packet sled uh, and again he's a bro expert if you're on the bro mailing list or in some of the bro chat rooms uh, or if you were at brocon then you've heard Aaron's name he's uh, quite the expert so uh, with that said, that's probably enough for me. So I'm going to turn things over to Aaron and let him get into uh, the meat of the presentation on uh, trickbot detection with bro scripting. Uh, Aaron, are you there? Yes, sir. All right, take it away. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for uh, joining us on Friday. Uh, I know it's it's Friday, so it's, it's the afternoon, but uh, stay with me here. We've got a half hour, 40 minutes worth of information that will be immediately applicable to you in some capacity. Uh, if not TrickBot, then some of the other ways and methods that I'll be showing you around using it for TrickBot, you can use otherwise. That. So we'll briefly summarize TrickBot. Uh, it's, it's been around a while, I think around a year, give or take. Um, identified some of the initial indicators for when TrickBot's you know, coming into your network, and then some of the post-infection indicators. Um, and show you how to deal with those, where to put those in bro to make the most use out of those details. And we'll write a single detection script around um, part of the, um, the post-infection. And then we will uh, gather together some of the intel that are the initial indicators and show you how to use those. So what it is, is a class of fishing. Uh, it's, you know, it mainly mimics a European bank, the official e looking emails. I don't have an example up right now. I apologize for that. But um, I have some reference slides at the end, which you can go to to find the details on it and see it. Uh, Prototypical phishing email, as everybody's unfortunately acutely aware of, uh, looks like a bank uh, email, um, Sendador and a few others from Europe. And they're sent in, you click on them, downloads, payload, bad things happen. Uh, very, very typical. Unfortunately, um, very effective, as we all unfortunately know. There are approximately 13 IP addresses for initial indicators, a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on the version of TrickBot. Fortunately, because it's it's preying on humans, um, it's, it's very good at just be, not changing a whole lot and still being very effective. So from um, you know last year to this year, it's really not changed a ton. A few more um, IPs that'll reach out to, maybe a different payload signature, maybe a different uh, uh, nuance here and there, but fairly, very similar. And that's why these initial indicators and the Intel side of Varo, as I'll show you, uh, works fairly well for catching it and again initially. Uh, and again, there are known URL patterns, which again feeds into the Intel framework, which I'll briefly discuss. The more interesting side, at least from a you know, development side for a you know, scripting course, and to teach uh, the more interesting skills around rather than just maintaining intelligence files, intel files, would be the post-infection, which is, um, it's a common, fortunately they use a common TLS cert, so you can look for similar issuers, CN subjects, and things like that that are in the X509 certificates that Bro will extract for us um, just out of the box. Uh, that's definitely the more interesting side of things for, I, I'm hopefully for everybody. Um, this trick is just a vehicle for delivering this information. Unfortunately, it's a, it's a fairly salient one. Now, as a reference that I, uh, I indicated here, um, 
Malware traffic analysis is a great place. The PCAPs I will actually be uh, demonstrating using are from that site. Uh, they are password protected. You go to the about blog on that site, you can actually find the password. Um, I won't say it on here because it's so obvious it's uh, it's not worth even saying. And then the reference to the Bro Intel framework um, are is right there. That's that's the primary thing of which we'll be talking about at least initially. The rest of it uh, would be about two slides worth of references. Uh, Google uh, is your friend for finding any events in Bro events. Um, Bro is an event driven. Um, scripting language, so you, you register callbacks, events fire, you get the data back, you get the, the calls fire later on, that's how you, you register on startup with the event handlers, and that's how Burrow works, just in a very, you know, five second nutshell of how it works. Um, and then you Google for an event, and if, you know, Google uh, Bro event, HTTP, you'll see a litany of various events that can be fired, um, can be registered for and getting the data back. So again, that's that's the that's the that's the course itself. And even in the course, we don't we don't spend time going over each and every event handler, because frankly, there's new ones coming out every day. I in the last two weeks, uh, two protocol analyzers. Each of those has probably a sum total of four or five events that fire out of just those protocol uh, analyzers. There, so you know, a laundry list of those is really not possible because as we build up the community, they will expand hopefully weekly monthly yearly um, and that's why google is is your best reference there and then let's see i, I believe that's it for so i don't want to uh, this is not a friday afternoon pummeling with powerpoint i just wanted to give a quick summary of where we're going and show you um, so that's the initial introduction and then go from there uh the the course itself uh, there are 130 uh, plus videos it is on demand. Uh, it's a great uh, interactive platform. Um, lectures, obviously, it's it's lecture based. It has the look and feel of a college course. I hope, where you go in, you you, you deal with the lecture. Um, you know, for a typical PowerPoint, I try not to get bludgeon any other PowerPoint, but I, I take it as um, from the standpoint you're coming in with some background knowledge in scripting and programming. But Bro is um, for those who are not familiar, it's a domain specific language or a DSL. That's why it's able to do network processing so well so quickly because it has the inherent types around ports and IP addresses and you know net masks and it understands how to deal with all of those things so you don't have to write handlers for them and you know different functions to deal with them like you would in C or another language. Um, so that's that's why you can actually solve problems of the type we have to deal with day in day out and you know incident response network security. Um, and, and even you can use it for, just as an aside, I know a lot of folks um, use it for capture the flag events at Black Hat, DEF CON, and other conferences. It's a great hidden little tool. It's not so small, it's massively capable that gives you more uh, capabilities than just sitting there and cruising through a PCAP in Wireshark. So just as a little tidbit, um, that's another great use of Bro. There are, for each uh, lecture, there are accompanying hands-on labs there are that will give you an artifact that you can take away fairly quickly to use in your day in day out jobs um, that this course will hopefully provide you. And then, uh, in straight, yeah, practical scripts, that's, that's the big thing. Well, there are forums, um, so you can actually interact with each other with me, there's questions we can all answer together. If there's any kind of ambiguity, I am absolutely there to solve that for you and we'll work that out together. If there are expanded ideas or things along those lines, that'd be great. I'd love to hear that as you go through the course. And we can, you know, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be more than happy to work with everybody on things like that, uh, especially if it's, it's important to your job. That's why you're taking the course more than likely. That's definitely something that, that interests me to help you through. And it is actually, it starts Monday. We're extending registration actually through Tuesday, just based on anybody from this course that hasn't already registered or otherwise. Uh, we want to get as many people in as possible, get eyes on it. Uh, we really do believe this is a great thing for everybody to learn. Um, it is a very powerful tool, as we'll show today, with just a handful of lines of code. You can actually do a lot, and you can actually gain back some, maybe some more of your time to do all those other things that we all unfortunately have to do. Um, from there. 
there are additional courses, of course, uh, Network Defense has the additional courses. Uh, there is the investigation theory, practical packet analysis, and elk security analysis, as well as network monitoring the Seracon. And you can go to networkdefense.io for those. And you can talk, uh, actually talk to Chris, go to Applied Network Defense. If you have a course in mind, you would like to build and add to the catalog of uh, courses that are being built out right now, which would be great. From there, that will be the end of the bludgeoning with PowerPoint. And now, get our screen sharing up here. Second. There we go. If there are any issues with anybody being able to see a font, please let me know. I've scaled everything up. Uh, classical, um, I, I like to have everything on my screen humanly possible when I'm writing code. And so it looks great to me, but it may look absolutely atrocious to you. First thing I'd like to do is I have a sample of the uh, PCAP for TrickBot. And it is the one right here. Again, this was a, uh, acquired from malware um, traffic analysis.net. And so we're just going to do a run. Uh, that would not be it. Copy and pasting is fundamental. Okay. In case anybody's wondering, I am actually running Bro on my, um, with my development. Uh, system here. It's uh, Mac OS. And I am running Bro within a Docker uh, container. Uh, you, you don't have to do that. I'm just doing it because I change between my you know, day in, day out version of Bro that I develop to the publicly released one to, and back and forth. So it's just easier thing for me to do as a containerized Bro. So if we look at the con log, these are the log files you'll see coming out of Bro. The, these are the um, those are tabs. It's tab separate values. If you've not seen Bro, the interesting thing comes if we look at the HTTP log. So we have an executable flowing over, and that's um, as everybody would will probably well know. Anytime you have an executable in a PCAP of a um, something malicious, that's always of interest. The other thing we have is a PNG file, apparently. Um, there's some interesting things there that we'll go over. But that's the initial run. So as you initially see running Bro, you see some interesting data. Uh, looking at the website, you will see several um, Intel uh, type hits. And one of them would be this indicator. This is actually the um, URL. It actually will go out and hit to pull down. That's that PNG file I just showed you in the HTTP log. Um, this is the Intel framework in Bro. This is just a quick splash again of the course and some of the details. You might already be very familiar with the Intel framework, you may not. One of the things to keep in mind, I'll tell you now and I'll tell you in the course, it's tab separated. Do not uh, put in spaces. You put in spaces, Bro will be upset to the point that uh, there is actually an, a linter for the Intel files that I'll just show you real quick because this is actually very salient. We save that, run that. So there's an invalid number of fields, and that's simply because it's a space instead of a tab. Of course. Go. And now it works fine. So that is an example of what we just saw in the HTTP log as an indicator in the Intel framework of Bro. If we look at the, let's see here. Go. This is the, a script that I just went ahead and, and put up that will load up the Intel framework, that's what the at loads perform here. And then that's the scene. So it'll look through all your different data. 
The due notice allows a notice to be fired. That's a separate disjoint log that has uh, usually Intel data in it or something very specific. If you're crafting your own notices, these are very specific things that you're writing protections for. These are things you care about. These are things you worry about uh, day in, day out. That's what you want to put there. Uh, not just uh, general metadata, which is emitted in your protocol logs. So this will let that uh, basic Intel file load and be executed in Bro, and it will look through, it's an Intel, it's decorated as an Intel URL, which means it'll obviously look on HTTP and be able to pull out data that way. So you run this. Pardon me, there we go. Let that run. Part of the reason it takes a while is it's it's a good size it's a good size PCAT, uh, two megabyte. It takes a it takes a few seconds for it to run, and we end up with we don't end up with anything on this run. That's not too surprising with the way Intel files work, to be honest. And that's why I I personally I like them. Critical stack infrastructure, for example, is a great place to go. The marketplace there is a great place to go. Download the Intel look at it and use it and sift it and sort it, but it is also not the end all be all. Uh, Intel is not. You have to be able to be a little bit smarter, use stuff down range. Uh, wherever you're collecting up your, your files for bro, uh, you want to be able to do some additional analysis. What I've done for this course, and all of this will be available on GitHub after the course uh, today. I will put this up. I'll put it on Twitter where it is, the link to it. Uh, this is the full list of indicators for TrickBot that I, I called together in prepping for this webinar. And you can see uh, the one I just had is in there, as well as um, a bunch of IP addresses, obviously. And that is pretty much it. it. It's a fairly straightforward one. And that's this is actually a good example of just the way um, Intel files work. You could put SMTP type things in here. So you could put uh, email addresses. Then you have to decorate at the end here. Uh, this is actually the, the directionality of what you're looking at. So it actually tells the Intel framework when you're running through Bro that in this case, I want to look at the response side of connection, not the origination side. So you care if it comes back, not if it went out too. And you could actually just take that out and it would, it would fire either way. On email, you have to be very specific. In the front, you're looking in the from, looking in the to, which side are you looking at? If you don't decorate this in TP with the directionality tags here, which you could get Google for to find in the Intel framework, that's the easiest way to find those, you, it will miss it. Uh, it may miss it anyway, depending on how it's being, it might be obfuscated or otherwise messed with. Um, Email is, is a little bit difficult, and depending on how it's coming in your organization, it might be encrypted past your sensor. So where your sensor lies in your network does matter. So keep that in the back of your mind too. So if somebody's asking you, why don't we see all the things? Well, depending on what side you're on, depending on encryption, you can't, you see it, you just don't see it plainly. So there, there's your defense, uh, use it wisely. So that's the full Intel, so if we uh, copy that, And then we'll go back over here. We'll change this to full, we'll rerun. See data, awesome. We have indicators, okay. Just to be clear, let's run this against another PCAP just so that oh, it's nothing on my sleeve, demonstration purposes type thing. There we go. And the other thing, I, I as a caveat here, I changed it to uh, JSON. So we're using JSON logging. Um, it makes it easier on me to be able to show you things is I can just dump it into JQ, and you can actually see the various files that have been extracted. Um, 
uh, the tap server value is, is, is cheaper if you're you're uh, sending it on range of your network because JSON obviously decorates everything, adds a lot of overhead. But as far as immediate debugging, testing, and demonstration, JSON is uh, my preferred way of doing it. It's it's human readable, which is always nice. So what we're going to do next, if we look at, let's see here, let's do 509 JQ. We look at this X509 certs. If we scroll up, should see some nasty bits. Example.com, this is actually it for this for this PCAP. Uh, it just ran. There are a couple of different versions. This is where it gets a little bit um, odd, or I guess standard because it's it's malware. But there's different certificates, but across the different versions. So the one about a year ago when it first came out used this certificate and it's standard across the board. And then somebody realized um, that, oh, well, let's release the new nasty guy. And they changed the certificate to look slightly different. So run that. This is the new version, newer version of TrickBot, I believe as of uh, beginning of September. You can see that this is clearly not a valid certificate. It's it's valid because it works. It's not valid um, because it was issued properly. And that's the updated TrickBot certificate. Now, where that gets interesting is we can write a detection around that. Um, that's not valid. Uh, the issuer is clearly not valid. So let's write a trigger around it. Or excuse me, a, a detection around it, a script around it. And for that, you create a new one. And like I said, I like to use JSON logs for my own ability to debug a little bit quicker. A lot, all of this is in the class, by the way. This is going to be your standard notice um, type script. And for that, we have to extend this global enumeration with our own details. In this case, we're going to call it 509 cert. And that is related to this module. So be trickbot detect x509 cert. So when you see it, that's the way it would be decorated. So it makes sense. And we're going to do a little something extra. We're going to actually make this configurable without having to go back and modify this script. And that is a big key in anything like this, in my opinion. You want to try to write something fairly crystal to begin with, and then leave it alone, and then modify it out so you don't run the risk of causing yourself a problem. And that is the issuer. So this is a set of strings containing the issuers that you care about that are TrickBot related. And it's an X509 certificate we're going to look at. I'll explain all most of this shortly. Pardon me, I'm going to cut and copy and paste some of this just because it's a lot of typing and I'll mistype. These are just the arguments. This is a FA file, is a file analysis file. So where this is a little bit different for looking at certificates in Bro for this approach is this is actually the file analysis framework, which is um, you can see is being alongside the network analysis. So as network events come through and they have any kind of file transfer activity, file um, any kind of file transfer activity is the best way to really summarize it. The file analysis framework could be activated by the protocol analyzer to let that data be extracted. And that's why in Bro you could actually extract all files. You can pull down anything over HTTP in, let, in which missing bytes are not present. So if you're missing anything, you can't reconstruct the file. Bro does not just reconstruct what it doesn't know about, unfortunately. So even if there's missing bytes, it'd be nice sometimes clearly to still dump what you've got because you can still, if it's in the case of an exfiltration type of event, you still want to know the holes, even with holes of what went out the door in a, in a Word document because strings is always going to give you something back. But I digress a little bit, but that's, that's the file analysis framework. And the file analysis, so these FE, FA file objects types are actually associated with the connections, which are the network connections. So we can actually loop through them 
and figure out where the connections are and actually correlate events back and forth between the two um, frameworks that work hand in hand. And then the certificate is, this is a large structure that contains all the certificate details that are extracted as metadata via the SSL and um, X509 analyzers. So the um, details here, this is checking to see is the CN present, if the CN is present, then look in this set. And if it is there, continue on. That's the summary of that. And this is where we'll loop through the connections in the in the file object, because a file could actually be associated with multiple connections. If it's some kind of protocol that chunks up a file and, and sends it down multiple different uh, ports, the if Bro has an analyzer that could reconstruct that and put it all back together, place it back together, it'd be like a similar to like a BitTorrent type uh, scenario then there could be multiple connections that you're looping through. And for some reason, you want to look at all of them, and they're all associated with that file handle. That's why there's a possibility of moving more one connection. This is one of the, frankly, it's one of the more powerful, and it's also one of the um, not, as, not as pretty as it could be. Um, Function calls in Bro, and they're always written this way by standard. You could write it otherwise, but this is uh, the standard way to do it for writing a notice. And one of these things I, I've done it for so long, I personally just keep an Evernote copy of a skeletonized version of this, this notice function, and, and I copy and paste. Today, I'm, I'm going to be a little more masochistic and actually type it all out. Just to prove I can more than anything myself. The things to know about the notices, if you have a lot of um, notices fired, that's good and bad. It's obviously, it could be, um, it's a signal to noise ratio issue you can run into. You can actually suppress them. So if a signal fires too often, you determine that, uh, you don't care about it for more than an hour, you can actually suppress it for an hour, the same data for an hour. Um, this is actually to the, the four tuple, which is the endpoints and ports put into a, a four tuple that are correlated there. So if it's the same uh, connection that continues to fire things, maybe it is really not very malicious, you can actually suppress that. Uh, we won't for this case, but that's something to keep in mind. If you're wondering how could I use this in, in my day job, uh, that's certainly how you would use that. There we go. Go. And so I have that right there. Yes, we do. And we can run that against the PCAT. And without fail, there is a typo. There we go. This is the important part. We fired our notice because the issue was there that we were worried about. These are the X509 certificate we saw in the X509 log. Um, this is the note I was talking about uh, before. This is the TrickBot module that this is the notice type. This is the message we gave with the, the destination. And this is the source which Again, this was, this was just acquired off malware traffic analysis. Um, no, uh, online, the PCAP was, but that's obviously an internal non routable IP. So that's your internal side. Uh, one thing to keep in mind directionality is a little bit difficult to always determine in a network. And, you know, obviously, you're sitting in the middle of yours. So source and desk could be flipped. You have to be a little bit careful about that, just in general. And that's why Bro uses origination and response, orig and R E S P, risk. Um, to make that kind of abstracted a little bit. So don't get too wrapped around the axle on that. That's the only reason they do that is it's hard to determine directionality all the time. Um, it doesn't make sense until you get in a lot of these massive convoluted networks and you can really understand the, the problems there. But that fires our certificate. 
So what I've done is I went ahead and built out this combined script, which loads the X509 detection that I just showed you with the TrickBot Intel that I've already shown you. I should modify that real quick. Back to full. And what this gives you uh, is the fullness of all the capabilities to detect TrickBot um, as of right now. Now, as I say this, somebody might be developing the next one for better or for worse. And so we have the notice log. It fired. And this is this is interesting because we actually have all the notices. This is the fullness of the Intel. All that Intel is firing. So if you see Intel hit, that's the Intel notice. That's the Intel framework going. And we also have the X509. So we have every, the full scale of everything. Um, where the X509 becomes important is that's after infection. So that's your post. That's really if you're going a scale one to ten. That's your probably your ten. Um, this side where it's just an Intel hit, depending is probably more on your scale of maybe six or five, um, depending on your policies of people clicking on fish, uh, no, fishing and, and dealing with that, uh, your environment said maybe a, or maybe a 10 or a 12. Somebody needs to, needs to be instructed not to plus click everything in all their email. Uh, we all know how fun that is. And there's also an Intel log now that has everything that fired and what the sources are and so on and so forth. And that rounds out, frankly, the ability to detect um, TrickBot. Gives you the tools necessary to detect TrickBot or anything you know, very similar to TrickBot. The, the nice thing about this approach, especially the X509, we all know everything is going towards encryption. Um, even the bad guys are getting a little more uh, intelligent about it unless they're really just trying to shut everything out of the wire at the same time. Be loud, like the you know the elephant and the wire approach. Get as much out as they can before they get caught. Then they usually don't worry about encryption. Um, obviously, it really depends if it's your endpoint getting affected. You may not have the overhead for encryption. It all depends. But by and large, everybody's trying to use encryption. That does not mean we're blind. Um, the the upcoming TLS, you know, one point three standardization, that will offer a little more issues for us, but we'll we'll adapt and overcome. Um, but that gives you the idea of how to, uh, in your networks, whether it be TrickBot or the next nasty that comes out, use these capabilities, particularly the X509 approach, and building up your own X, um, your Intel files and deploying those. I recommend Intel Linter. I, I did write it, but I, I do recommend using it. I wrote it because I got tired of smashing my head against my keyboard, forgetting to put a tab or missing a tab or writing something to generate a script and having it be bad or getting a, feel, um, a feed from somebody and having there be one space amongst uh, a 10 megabyte feed and trying to find that. Um, that is truly a digital needle in a haystack. I don't want anybody else's forehead to have keys imprinted in it. So it's out there. Um, it's on the packet sled GitHub uh, repo. Please uh, use it. Please submit pull requests if I broke something. Uh, please suggest changes and updates. I'm all for it. But before we conclude um, this part, I have one more thing I wanted to show everybody to provide everybody here, and I will also be releasing this today. And that is, um, I actually want to show you the, the PCAP real quick. So this is the actual PCAP of the, uh, I believe it's the September 18th. So yeah, actually uh, not even quite a month ago version of TripBot. I scroll through here. Actually, it doesn't even take much because it was doctored nicely for us. You see the six express.ch um, domain. And we know that that's one of our indicators that we're concerned about. So I'm going to go ahead and do the, the typical follow the TCP stream here, follow the bouncing ball. And what this, this frankly dawned on me when I was when I was getting this webinar together. One thing Bro does not do right right now, in my opinion, this is something you can easily change. This content type header is not emitted as part of the HTTP log right now. Uh, simple change. Uh, I actually might be submitting a pull request uh, in about an hour for this um, to you know kind of ask them to get that in the standard um, 
HTTP log for bros, it, it is it is very compelling given what I'm about to say. And some of you may already be doing this, and if you are, awesome. Um, so this is content type. This is the this is actually the the host getting this this JPEG or PNG, excuse me, reaching out, trying to pull it down normal, you know, get request. The server is replying, okay, well here's your PNG content type is this. However, anybody astute knows that MZ are the magic bytes for an executable. Um, and obviously, with you know, this program cannot be run in DOSMO, it makes it even more obvious. So what we have a problem is the content type and the actual body type are not lined up, are not right. So you're getting back an executable, not a PNG. This is obviously, there's a problem, either something's misconfigured, we know in this case it's tricked by, um, or there's a problem otherwise. Now, this, this was in a, one of those epiphanal moments, and I realized, wait, Bro doesn't have a capability for this. So this is the script that I, I put together. It is, uh, I'm calling it, you know, C type, ver v, v, M type, content type versus mime type. And I'll just go over it real quick. And again, I will be putting this up on GitHub for everybody to, uh, to use, look through, pull apart, and, and um, suggest changes or otherwise incorporate it as is. This is not, this is completely trick bot agnostic. This will work for any content type on your network, any data like this on your network. And again, you could actually use it to find misconfigured um, services. If it's um, a REST API pulling down you know, images and suddenly it's, it, you're sending out executables, that's probably bad. Um, I don't think you probably designed that. At least I would hope not. And this is, we are once again going to use notices. Uh, I have it just as a caveat. I'm going to leave the JSON log on here. Feel free to pull that out. So if you see JSON logs, you're used to getting the tab separated value ones. Um, I'll go ahead and take that out before I post it up to GitHub, but that's my standard approach. And I usually don't put them in a script like this either, uh, as far as the tuning, uh, policy tuning of the JSON logs. I just did for demonstration purposes today. So it's a notice. One thing we're doing here is we are extending the HTTP log. This is why you don't necessarily need the bro maintainers to do this, you can do this. This is just redefining and extending that HTTP info record, that, that structure that then loads the metadata in minute with original content type. And that's what we're missing. And that's what we need for this detection to work. Uh, I put together a uh, quick little, this is really could be a two or a three line function that takes that mime type, which it is actually by default a complex mime type that has the colon in it with the UTF delimiter in it. So text plane, colon, or excuse me, semicolon, UTF, et cetera. It's the complex uh, content type by default. And this will work if that is not there. So by, by default, if it's not there, it'll return back the first one. So, um, split string all, we'll just do that. So this will work fine. This is the magic that actually uh, is the other event, the HTTP event. As I said, you can go Googling for HTTP event bro and see tons of them. This is one you will probably end up using a lot. It's HTTP header. Um, these are so many, and they're dealt with kind of weird. Uh, bro, by default, uh, normalizes them all to capitals right now which is a little bit problematic, but as long as you understand it's there, you can write detections around it. So this checks to see is that uh, header value, the, the, the name, the content type. If it is, great, let's set this extended record, so our HTTP record in the connection to the value, which in this case will be the value of the content type. And then the rest of the, the magic for it comes down into the file sniff. This is what's emitted from the file analysis framework. When it fires a file analysis event and it gets just enough data in a buffer, it uses an internal magic file, not the system magic file, the internal magic file, which has the bytecode representation of, uh, I, I don't even have to count off the top of my head, a lot of different file types. And it provides a mime type that you can compare against. In this case, we don't care what the mime type is. We're just going to compare the content type to the mime type that the file sniff is providing. Um, this again, the, the trick here is it's looking to see is the source, the HTTP analyzer. You could obviously have this be FTP or extended otherwise. In this case, it's just HTTP I'm worried about. And if it's not HTTP, because these are events, these are callbacks, they get executed um, in order by, based on these priorities. You want to check early and exit early and return early out of your your handlers or you run the risk of spending time you don't need to otherwise so be aware of that 
just in general. I'll go over that many times in the course. Um, I'm obviously printing that, print that out now. Uh, we go through here, we look at the mind type and we check it, and then we run through. The reason this looks weird, and then I will I'll demonstrate it real quick, is the fact that, as I said, the um, the connections in a file, uh, in this file, FA file object type, the structure of this record, are, uh, is a table. So it's a collection of events in a table that are keyed by the four tuple, which is the endpoints in the ports. And so you can run through them all. And that's why this looks a little bit weird. You're pulling that, um, out of that table, you're pulling the immediate connection and you're pulling out and looking if there's an HTTP, um, connection or analyzer attached to it with data, and you're looking at that original type. And here is where we're actually gonna do the check. If it's not there, then we're gonna actually fire a notice again. Without further ado, I will show you. And that's exactly what we'd expect looking at the, if we look back here, we see, if we follow that follow one more time, you see the content type is image PNG, as you would expect from the get. However, the body is definitely not a PNG. And so the results are, we fire a notice. And again, this is not TrickBot specific. This is just going to be released for general usage um, for anything and everything. And that is, um, as quick as I can, a summary of how to find TrickBot, how to do a little bit of hunting with Bro and um, protecting your network Bro from that. And then looking at a uh, PCAP and then being able to kind of get that PCAP observation and put it into a script, either the X509 type script or this content type versus mind type script. The, there's tons of details. Uh, I hope all of you take the, the scripting class and start filling those in for you. Um, but otherwise, uh, please use these scripts to your, to your benefit and let me know if there's any, any issues with them. I'd be happy to fix them. I'd be happy to hear your input. Aaron, I've got a couple questions for you here in the chat. Um, one of one of those Craig asks is the critical stack Intel platform still around I thought when uh, it was sold they discontinued the free version it is I was just uh, funny you asked I was just using it the other day it is still there um, and I actually just had lunch with Liam Randall a couple months ago they they definitely have some things cooking that'll be out sooner than later um, but yes it's still there okay great uh, another question was uh, what shell are you using that allows for autocomplete of bro syntax? Ah, this is, um, do you mean the shell or the editor? If, if the, the shell, this is just, uh, if you're talking about the shell here, this is just the JQ utility to um, highlight um, JSON. If you're talking the editor, I am actually, uh, uh, Microsoft's Visual uh, Studio Code, the lightweight version, I am actually a very big fan of. I wrote the Bro um, code highlighter for it, um, so the syntax highlighter for it, um, because I, I was using Adam and IO for the longest time, which I'm still a fan of. It has a great Bro mode, but I switched to uh, Visual Studio Code I, because of the project editing and, and it, you know, management, and it's a little bit better for the way I work, um, and I just wrote the syntax highlighter in it for, for Bro. Good deal. Um, I think that's the end of our questions. So uh, we'll wrap up here. Um, Aaron gave you the overview of the course earlier. Again, um, it starts actually on Monday, which means access opens up on Monday. Uh, you can get access by going to learnbroscripting.com. Uh, it looks like I forgot a T in my URL in the slide. Whoops. But uh, it's learnbroscripting.com, or you can go to networkdefense.io to sign up. 
uh, pricing is $797 and you get access to all the materials for the year and it is a lot of material. So uh, Aaron went over some really great examples of detection today. I really particularly like that last one. I think that's one I'm going to deploy uh, personally myself. Uh, but he's going to show you basically how to build those things, not just how to understand them, but how to build them, which I think is pretty darn cool. Bro is very powerful. Uh, it's a tool I personally use, which is why I'm really excited to be able to offer this course on it. So again, that course starts Monday. Uh, you can sign up now. You can sign up actually through Tuesday, uh, but Tuesday at midnight is the hard cutoff. Uh, we'll hopefully offer it again, but not until next year, and we don't have a date uh, for that set up. Uh, finally, if uh, you're interested in any of our other courses, we have quite a few of those. They're practitioner focused. Uh, of course, we have investigation theory. So that really gets into the how do you do investigations once you actually have detected something or once you've done some hunting and we cover a little bit of hunting in there too. Uh, we have my packet analysis course, uh, the ELP course, uh, and we have a new course coming out pretty soon uh, on network monitoring with Suricata. So look for an announcement of that. So you can take any of those courses at networkdefense.io. Uh, and if you're interested in teaching your own course, we're always looking for course authors uh, and we have a page that shows our process and how that works on appliednetworkdefense.com where you can reach out to me. So with that said, uh, we'll end the, uh, the presentation today. I hope to see many of you in the upcoming uh, bro course. Uh, Aaron, thanks for your time and thanks everyone for coming. Y'all take care. Thanks everyone.